was glad to glad from God by God that God bless Betsy to be here. I was I was I was surprised. My heart was overjoyed when I saw Betsy get out the truck this morning and and uh, walk walk in. And that's good. I'm glad you're here. Glad glad you're here. And uh, and our our preacher. Uh, 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 yell, yell that, uh, that that is that is here as well. I still consider him our preacher, <laughs> even though he doesn't <laughs> anymore. But he, he he is still our preacher. I, I feel, and uh, because he encouraged me in, in so many ways, and in so many ways he, he encouraged me to to uh, to just just pl- pl- uh, press on and and plot on into in God and to uh, show His grace and His mercy to to others. Um, uh, my son is here today. He, he, he felt sorry for me, uh, because Jamila has been gone and I, I posted a, a post on Facebook. I said, man, you don't know how much you miss your wife until she takes a trip and leaves you. I'm like, that. and he felt sorry for me and he came to spend the night with me. <laughs> so man, I was, so he, uh, I appreciate him being here. He, he has drill, so and uh, and I called him. I said, "Son, you you can spend a night. I said, you can come and spend a night, you know, <laughs> because I uh, I was kind of lonely at, at the house. It, it, but I spent that time in quietness and without the television on, praying to God, meditating to with God. That that is some good precious time to take, cut off everything, and just pray and meditate and think about what God would have you to do and have us to do and, and us to us to be." And I appreciate, you know, him for, uh, for coming and uh, filling up the void of loneliness for me. Um, I also wanted to uh, thank our elders for giving me this opportunity. If, if our elders saw the vision to use the various men in the congregation to, to speak, I'm just one of those guys that get up and try to, to preach. You may, you, you'll, you'll hear me. I'll be trying, but I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing the job. But anyway, I just, you know, we just get up here and speak. And speak what we know for what God's word says. And I'm just one of those, those speakers. And it will be a, a different guy next week. And if you want to hear something different or a different uh, perspective on the word of God, come back next week. And you'll, you'll hear another, another perspective of the word of God. Uh, we're all just humble servants. And I believe, you know, it, it's good to know how this book was put together. But it's best also to know, on top of that, what's in it. We need to know what's in the word of God and how to extrapolate those things from God's word and to apply those things to our lives. And and we want to thank God for putting this book together for us. You know, I thank him for that. But um, but if you have your copy of the word of God, I'm going to be reading from uh, Psalm 55, verses 1 through 6. I'm going to read for emphasis sake because this, this writing is very powerful. And it's very, very, it's very impactful. And, and I want you to, I want to stress some things that, that are in, in, in this, this particular writing of, of David. Here it says in verse, verse number one, it says, Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. Attend to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaint, and I moan because the noise of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they drop trouble upon me, and in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and, and, and the horror overwhelms me. And I say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. This particular writing was penned by that great patriarch and poetic genius, King David. He was born of the son of Jesse of Bethlehem of Judea. He was the youngest of eight sons. He was a handsome young man, the Bible says. And he worked as a shepherd for his father. David finally, in in the process of time, was anointed by Samuel while Saul was, King Saul was still upon the throne. 
David proved himself later a brave and fearless warrior in facing and killing Goliath, the Philistine giant, in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Then he was promoted to royal armor bearer and military leader of Saul's army. He became a son-in-law of King Saul by marrying King Saul's daughter, Michelle. David finally succeeded Saul upon the throne of Israel at Saul's death. King David, who is said to be the greatest king that ever lived, and is mentioned as a man after God's own heart. His influence led many victories for Israel, which was God's chosen people. King David is described as a brave warrior a military genius, a brilliant statesman, a talented musician, a poetic writer, and with all of his heart, a lover of God. When you study the life of David, when you look at all of his accomplishments, when you look at David's accolades, when you look at his glorious kingship and you see his popularity and you see his riches that he had had acquired and his, his victories in battle and his promises that God had made him, but when you see his closeness to God, still David had great fear, distress of mind, uneasiness and worry turned into a neurotic state of great tension, dread and stress. In his life, which is true of all of us. When you look at all the things that we have accomplished, when you look at the degrees that we have hanging on the wall, when you when you look at the 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 uh, awards that we have uh, have allayed it uh, upon, and we and you look at the applause that we, we we receive, when you look at all of our accomplishments, in between all of the accolades, there there have been some distress and stressful times in our lives that we just say, Lord, oh, that if I had wings like a dove, I would fly away from this mess and be at rest. Dr. David L. Lang said, stress is the gap between the demands placed on us and the strength we have in meeting the demands. And it becomes our reaction. Stress is our reaction to a basic threat. And the basic threat is a perceived inability to cope. Ooh, I know that's a lot of stuff to say, but, but, but that's, that's, that's what Dr. David L. Lang said in his book, uh, All Stressed Up and No Place to Go. Oh, how many times have I felt that way? That if I've, I am so stressed out, I've got all of the weight, seems like the weight of the world on my shoulders. I'm trying to do good. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to accomplish things. But there are some things in my life that just stresses me down. Haven't you felt that way? King David had reason to feel an inability to cope. Because he was hated by a jealous Saul who repeatedly tried to kill him. This forced David to live a life of a vagabond and a fugitive for several years. We read of Saul's growing hostility and jealousy toward David in 1 Samuel chapter 18. Saul tries to kill David in verses 10 through 11. Saul plots David's death by giving him his daughter, Michelle, for a wife in verse number 20. In chapter 19, David escapes another attempt on his life by the aid of his wife, Michelle. In verses 18 through 24, David flees to Ramah, and Saul is close behind him. In verse number 21, David becomes a hunted fugitive. He's on the run to, uh, he, to Ahimelech at Nob, and then he runs to Achish, the king of Gath. And then the Philistines plotted against him, but he acted like he was a crazy lunatic so he can get an escape from them. In, verse, in chapter 22, David hides from Saul in a cave. In, in verses 23, David gives all that he has in battle to the, to the, to the village of Keilah. And, and, to, and to show how much they did not appreciate it, they planned to give him over to Saul when he arrived. 
In verses 16, the Ziphites betrayed him, but he gets away. Verse 24, chapter 24, David protests his innocence. In verses 26, David pleads with Saul for peace. In Samuel chapter, 2 Samuel 11, we read of David's sin with Bathsheba and the awful murder of her husband Uri to cover it up. The reason for our, that our text was penned, David's household and kingdom was falling apart. As David arrives into the city, a relative of Saul named Shimei was on top of the hill, cursing at him, kicking rocks at him, throwing, dirts and, throwing, throwing rocks and dirts at him and his men. David simply says, leave him alone. The Lord sent him to do this. And meanwhile, David got word that his son Absalom had convinced all of Israel to leave David's kingship and make Absalom king. And Absalom was was coming to kill him with an army. Can can you see David's anguish? Can can you see the stress that he he was under? David was experiencing some heavy burdens. This is why he penned this and cried out, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for I would fly away and be at rest. See, David was tired of the running. He, he was wearied from the, his, the problems in his life. He, his, his sin had soured his, his spirit. He, his broken hearted from the betrayal. He was wounded with rejection. He was tormented with blasphemous memories. He was pinned down with pity. He was tainted with tiresome troubles. He was wounded and weary. He, can you understand why he would say, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I will fly away. Then I will be at rest. All of us have felt like David at one time or another. You know, so all of us have, have or may be even feeling that way right now. Uh, you may be going through something. You may have some health issues. You may have family problems. You may have financial issues. You may have maybe dealing with some type of issue in your life. And it makes you feel in this, this way. Because sometimes I can walk away, walk around all day feeling good. And then like I got the world in the jug in one hand and the stopper in the other hand. And sometimes I get up and don't want to pull the covers from over my head. And, you know, the dogs go to barking at you, you know. You, you know it, and it seems like nothing goes right in your life. Nothing is going right. Why is all this, these commodities are happening to me? Because life is an uneven journey. Life has its hooks and its beams. Isn't that right? Life has its ups and its downs. Life has its ins and and its outs. Life has its mountain highs and and its valley lows. Life has its hallelujahs and life has its Lord's have mercies. That's life, isn't it? Life is gloom and gladness. Life is an uneven journey. That's why our hearts cry out in one form or another, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I will fly away from this mess. Then I will be at rest. I think we all want to escape the headaches, the heartaches, the pressures, and the trials, and the struggles of life. This is, this, this is life. You know, they, they, they even have on these uh, uh, um, uh, in insurance commercials, they say that, you know, uh, when life happens, in other, words, in other words, some things will happen to you, and it, and it's, and it's not uh, anything that you can do about it. But David said, wings like a dove. He could have said wings like a crow, a vulture, or even wings like a sparrow. But doves are very small birds. With a small, thin, they have very small, thin wings that can't handle a lot of wind or storms or light or even strong winds. Doves fly away from storms seeking rest. Doves were used in the Leviticus priesthood as peace offerings. Doves are symbols of peace. David wanted peace and rest 
from the turbulent, turbulent storms in his life. As do we want rest from our turbulent situations in our lives. Am I right about this? Is this making sense? Dr. David L. Lane said, when you get to the end of yourself, you cannot do anything for yourself in spite of yourself. You need a power bigger than yourself. <laughs> that is true. David learned, he, he had learned where to seek his refuge. Psalm 57 verse 1 says, be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take my refuge till these storms of destructions are passed by. When we depend on God, he becomes the source of our strength. Sometimes the reason for our troubles, and sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the reason for our trouble is that God is trying to get us to the next level of spiritual maturity. Amen. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 5 says, Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By also, we also have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation works patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope makes not ashamed by the love of God which is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. So when God gives us the power to handle the storms of life, he gives us the strength to go through the storm. Isn't that right? Does this make sense? C.S. Lewis said, hardships often prepare ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. So I say, Christian, rest in the hope of God during your trial. When you rest in the hope of God, God will get you through the storm. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 29 through 31 says, He gives power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases their strength. Even the youth shall be weary or faint or utterly fall. Uh, then he said, oh man, I, I lost it. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So this is assurance. David was looking at his situation. Isaiah here is showing us the future. He's talking about us today. God can and will get us through. The storm. Not like the dove that wants to fly away from the storm. Fly around the storm and to find rest. But God wants us to mount up with wings as eagles. I missed something in that verse. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. So, Isaiah, why an eagle? Eagle is a very large bird that has a six to seven foot wingspan. Wings that can penetrate very strong winds. When, when an eagle sees a storm, he is able to fly straight through the storm. That's what God wants to, us to do. He wants us to take our rest and our hope in him. Then fly straight through the storm. When I have marital issues... God wants me to take my rest in him and fly straight through, not away from, but fly straight through the storm. When I'm having health issues and I'm having surgery here and I'm running, my back is hurting there and I'm, when, I, when, when I'm tired and I'm weary and this body is just getting older, fly, you can fly straight through the storm by resting in God. Isn't this true? Y'all? Am I making sense? I, I, I just want to know that. Am I, am I making sense? God wants to take us through the storm. Jesus in the garden 